Welcome to the Whiskey Vibes. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and we've got a couple of things here. Two, so, two brewers whiskey? Yeah, this is the Yukon, right? Now, this is Canada. Canada. Remember, we tried this before when Teresa Smith sent us the peated single malt, which was this one. Peated Canadian whiskey. And we really liked it. Okay. It was two brewers who started distil distilling. Sure. And we were a little skeptical. Yeah. But it turns out they were focused on small craft, like uh, specialized releases, and they did a really good job. Yeah. So during the last round, Brad LeClaire sent us. Oh, the Brad uh, And he sent LeClaire. us the peated version, which we already had back here. Yeah, yeah. But he also sent us the unpeated version. Yeah, yeah. And I thought we could do an AB comparison. Okay. Okay, all right, all right, this is from Brad. Mm-hmm, so this is the unpeated release. So we need to yell at him. Brad the Black. All right, peated is to your left, unpeated to the right. So let's start with the unpeated. Ooh, that is the most plum candy, like, like melon a plum candy. And, plum and grapes. Yeah, just the most candied fruit yeah, I've yeah. ever smelled yeah. in my life. It's plum and grapes and sugar. Oh, that's beautiful. None of the weird yeah. funky notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Going for the peak. On the nose. Oh, there's another layer. Yeah, oh, right. immediately it's got all the same roots, but then branches into that earthy. Yep. They did really good cuts on this. Not ashy, not meaty, not savory. And smoke is... Probably not even a very, very good descriptor that Pete presents as an Yeah, you wouldn't earthiness. smell it as, oh, I smell that smoky. No, you smell it and you think, oh, that's earthy, rich, earthy. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, man, the malt is, the malt is great. I love the taste. It's so easy and friendly, though. Yeah, I really wish it was, uh, it's 43. Yeah. If it was 46 to 50, right. there's a little more drama. Yeah. It's, this is an easy drinker, man. It's like... That'd go down like water. Yeah, it's like uh, it steps up and it goes, are you ready? And then you go, yeah! And it goes, okay! Here we go. Yeah, there's no... It's just beautifully rounded and sweet. There's no real dramatic journey and the finish is a little bit candy. But it's not so sweet that it's clinging or coyingly sweet. Right. It's just... It's, it's so nice. Like, this one you take home to meet the parents, and the parents will not be upset. Have we ever had a Canadian f*** you whiskey? Because... I mean, it, that last one was the closest no, we've ever come. I'm, but I'm saying, though, even that whiskey at 66% alcohol, mm -hmm. right? It was one of the highest proofed whiskeys I've ever had. There are a lot of people who would classify that as a f*** you whiskey, though. Well, but, Just not us. But I've had whiskeys that are bigger, louder f*** you's. At much lower proofs. Yeah. They just make stuff that is just friendly and easy. Dude, try that um, peated because the peated is presented as a green vegetal note instead of smoke. You say vegetal. On the taste. I, I, On I, the I, taste. I taste it. I okay. taste it. I taste it. You say vegetal, I say there's a woodiness. And yeah. And yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Right? Like, so imagine when you, um, when you have a grill and you grill the green vegetables. Mm hmm Right? And so they got a little bit of char on them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like roasted vegetables. Okay, yeah, right. I'll pick up what you're throwing down. What do you got on? Man, there? that's so good. What do, you, what do you got on there? You got some broccolinis on there. Yeah. You got the. Uh, got the the uh, tried and true asparagus. You got some red bell peppers. You got the bell peppers. Right. You got that the, sort of astringency from a bell pepper. If you if you leave the interior skin on a bell pepper and you right. get that slight sourness or yeah. or uh, not or bitterness to it. But it's like that. That does take the place of, you know, all the, candy. This the, is the way more interesting. The, the, well, yeah, but what we love about this, with the fruitiness and the grapes, it's buried and the sugar, on that. It's, it's buried. It's still there, but the peat does the earthiness and the peat and then the charred vegetable stuff. Man, I still like both. A bit of, of these. woodiness in there. Man, They're both lovely. I, yeah, I could totally drink those living in that area as a as a local. Sure. Just I always have these in the house. Mm, they're they're delightful. Uh, what could possibly compare to this? Uh, sure. Well, is there like the vegetal peat? I don't know that I've ever had anything that. Eric Fleming Waite is at Glendronic Distillery. Mm. This was 41 minutes ago as of this recording. Uh, second stop today was Glendronic Distillery where I filled my own bottle. Ah, oh, right on. So if you guys haven't been following along that's inside you, that's the tribe. You get all the way up to the cork. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Eric Waite, who has his own two channels, yeah. but I was a whiskey channel. And, and by the way, just graduated the Edinburgh Scotch Whiskey Academy. Oh, right on. Congratulations. And passed the test and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he has been posting his travels yeah. in the whiskey tribe. Who is it that we know in that 
went to the uh, whiskey academy over there in Scotland. He's a he's a distiller. That's where, Reed Huddleston. Reed. Reed. Yeah, yeah. He, okay. Different this place. Is totally different school. And, no, and it's a two year program. Now the thing, the thing that was that was uh, funny to me is because there, aren't there distillers that have gone through there before? No, no. Let's just say that Reed knows just about everybody in Scotland okay. at a distillery because they all. Are fellow graduates of his school. Let me put it this so way. So you name any distillery, and Reed's like, oh yeah, I know like four people there. Let me put it this way. They have fun rituals. Brett Bainbridge, confession time. It's all my fault. I'm the one <laughs> I'm the one that added ice in the shorts poll option and the spirit of shenanigans. And I can't even pretend I'm sorry that I did, Daniel. Yeah. The I tribe did. had my back on that one. Yeah, they did. And you had the front butt. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it just, was glorious. That comment was just so well written, I had to include it. Yes. Yeah. It was a tribe episode about um, doing neat versus whiskey on the rocks. And then we went through the top seven according to the tribe. Uh, Chad will link it up here. All right. Okay, I am for the life of me trying to find an easily accessible scotch that has that same fruity aspect. Mm. Like beautifully round sweet fruity of the unpeated one. And I can only think of the blends. Ooh. Because of the simplicity, and even the blends, I'm not sure I have a good comparison to it. Come back, taste the unpeated thing, and there is a complexity after coming off the peated that I wasn't picking up before. I'm now getting some vanillas and caramels in addition to like the plum and the grape and the sugar. Yeah, yeah, I got that. It's getting more interesting, which usually I would expect, you know, it's, if I'm, if but I'm it's having something more sweetness. If I'm if I'm having something peated, it's going to, you know, overwhelm anything that I have immediately okay. afterwards. It's like, no, I'm picking up more flavors from the unpeated now. This is going to be kind of ridiculous to once again feature monkey shoulder, but uh, it's, monkey shoulder. It's the only thing I can think of that has that same round sweetness. Okay. But it also has a malty mustiness that this one does not have. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm just saying, people that don't like monkey shoulder, you're not gonna like this one. You're probably not. There's more, there's more, more character, more flavor coming out but of. But only like 15 percent. 25. Sure. 25. Why not? I'll give you 25. 25. We can yeah. disagree. But here's the thing: is we can disagree. Monkey shoulder is made is is a freakishly popular blend right now. Yeah, yeah. And so, hey, two brewers on a craft level. You created one of the more popular budget blends on the whole market. Right. All right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.